Welcome to the 30th Annual National Geographic Bee. Let's meet your 10 finalists. From Texas, 13-year-old Nihar Jenga is a winner of the 2016 Scripps National Spelling Bee. When he's not studying geography, he enjoys playing football and video games with friends. From California, 13-year-old Venkut Ranjun plays the piano and has been competing in both his school and state bee since 2015. From Arizona, 13-year-old Gayatri Kaimul has been snorkeling in Hawaii. When she's back in the lower 48, she loves listening to music and reading. From Ohio, 13-year-old Saket Pocharachu has won the Ohio State Bee three years in a row. He's also quite the outdoorsman. He loves playing tennis and exploring nature. From New Jersey, 13-year-old Anushka Budicote has been playing violin since the young age of seven. She's also an avid reader and plans on writing a novel about an explorer. From Massachusetts, 11-year-old Atreya Milana is an accomplished athlete. He plays cricket, soccer, and swims. From Oregon, 13-year-old Ashwin Sivakumar is a composer and birder. He's even spent time birdwatching while traveling through Costa Rica. From Georgia, 14-year-old Vishal Seretti counts Hawaii among his coolest destinations and loves playing basketball and running cross country. From North Carolina, 14-year-old Jonathan Song plays golf and is on a competitive robotics team. When he's not tearing it up on the course, he loves traveling. He's made it all the way to China. And finally, from New Hampshire, 14-year-old Sean Chang enjoys speed cubing, traveling, and fishing. A competitor in all areas, he also loves to play high-level soccer. Here they are, the 2018 National Geographic Bee finalists. And now, your host, journalist, humorist, and Emmy Award-winning writer, Mo Rocca. <clears throat> Well, hello, everyone. I am thrilled to be back in Washington, D.C., hosting the National Geographic Bee, which turns 30 this year, which means it's only two years older than I am. <laughs> this year, 2.6 million students competed in their school geographic bees. 54 top geographers from each state and U.S. territory earned the right to compete this week. And after a series of preliminary rounds, 10 extremely worthy finalists made it to this stage. Today, one of these bright minds will earn a $50,000 scholarship and the title of National Geographic Bee Champion. Are you ready to begin? Let's get started. The first seven rounds will focus on U.S. geography. This first round will require spoken answers only. I'm going to ask each of you a question about a capital city in the United States. A photo related to your question will appear on your monitor. You will be asked to name the city and state that it's in. These questions are worth one point. You will have 12 seconds to answer. Students, are you ready? They're ready. Here we go. Nihar, we begin with you. Here is the first question. This state capital on the Pearl River was named after a president of the United States. Name this city and state. Jackson, Mississippi. That is correct for one point. Bankut, home to the Mark Twain House and Museum, this state capital is north of the Long Island Sound. Name this city and state. Hartford, Connecticut. That is correct. Gayatri. Located in the Central Valley, this state capital was the western terminus for both the Pony Express and the first transcontinental railroad. Name this city and state. Sacramento, California. You got it. Sakate. This state capital is northwest of Daniel Boone National Forest and is located in the Bluegrass region. Name this city and state. Frankfort, Kentucky. That is right. Anushka. This state capital is located near both the Big Belt Mountains and the source of the Missouri River. Name this city and state. Helena, Montana. That is correct. Atreya. Founded by the French, this state capital is located 150 miles upstream from the Mississippi River Delta. Name this city and state. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That is correct. Ashwin. Located on the Hudson River, this state capital was an active trading post in the 1600s. 
Name this city and state. Albany, New York. You got it. Vishal. Located about 20 miles from the Platte River, this state capitol building is topped by a nearly 20-foot statue of a farmer. Name this city and state. Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska is correct. Jonathan. Located on the eastern edge of the Sierra Nevada, this state capital experienced a silver rush in the 1850s. Name this city and state. Carson City, Nevada. That is right. And Sean, this state capital is east of the Washita Mountains and is home to the William J. Clinton Presidential Library. Name this city and state. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I'm sorry, the answer was Little Rock, Arkansas. And we are off and running at the 2018 National Geographic B. <clears throat> These 10 gifted finalists are competing for $85,000 in college scholarships. Today's champion will win 50,000 of it, along with a lifetime membership to the National Geographic Society and a Lindblad expedition to the Galapagos Islands aboard the National Geographic Endeavor 2. Second place will earn a $25,000 scholarship and $10,000 goes to the third place finisher. Sounds pretty good, right? I'd say so. For round two, you'll use your stylus and tablets. Everyone answers this next question at the same time. This question is worth one point and you'll have 12 seconds to write your answer. National parks have been called America's greatest idea. And yet these and other public lands face serious threats. National Geographic is dedicated to furthering our understanding of these critical ecosystems and inspiring action to protect them. Take a look at your monitors. Yellowstone National Park is a geological and ecological wonder. It was the world's first national park and covers nearly 3,500 square miles, but its ecosystem is threatened by activity outside its borders. While it is best known for its bison, bears, and wolves, the park's most abundant large mammal is the elk, whose migration paths reach well beyond Yellowstone's boundaries. And here is your question. Elk once roamed most of the United States, but hunting and loss of habitat reduced their range to the area of what mountain range that includes Yellowstone National Park and that stretches from New Mexico to British Columbia? You will have 12 seconds to write down your answer. Time's up, let's see what you wrote. And surprise, surprise, for one point, the correct answer is Rocky Mountains. <laughs> 10 for 10, nicely done. You can now put down your stylus because round three will require spoken answers only. I'm going to ask each of you a question that will test your knowledge of revered places in the United States. When it's your turn, a photo related to your question will appear on your monitor. Nihar, we begin with you. Here is your question. Sacred to many Alaskans, this mountain was known by the early Athabascan people as the Tall One, and it may have been central to their creation story. Name this mountain. Mount Denali or Mount McKinley. Well done. Denali is correct for one point. And Mount McKinley was also acceptable. Thank you. Bain cut. Thornhill Chapel blends into the surrounding woods, giving visitors a sense that they are seated in the forest itself. The chapel is located in what physiographic region that covers much of northern Arkansas and southern Missouri? The Ozark Plateau. The Ozark Plateau is correct. Gayatri. Big Sur, a scenic region along the California coast, has long attracted Native Americans, hermits, and artists. This region stretches from Carmel by the Sea to San Simeon along what mountain range? The Sierra Nevada. I'm sorry, we were looking for Santa Lucia. Saket. The city of Nauvoo attracts visitors due to its historic importance as the home of the Latter-day Saints from 1839 to 1846, before they traveled west to the Great Salt Lake. Nauvoo is located upstream from Quincy 
on what river? The Mississippi River. That is correct. Anushka. This famous gospel choir performs all over the world, sharing the joy of faith through music. The choir shares its name with a large neighborhood in Upper Manhattan that is a center of African-American culture. Name this neighborhood. Harlem. Harlem is correct. Atreya. Ceremonial chambers called kivas were a feature of pre-Columbian structures in North America. Built by the ancestral Puebloans, kivas can be found in what canyon that shares its name with a national historical park in northwestern New Mexico? Chaco Canyon. Chaco Canyon is correct. Ashwin. Each year, Mardi Gras celebrations draw thousands of revelers to public spaces throughout New Orleans, including Bourbon Street and Jackson Square. In what district that is the city's oldest? French Quarter. French Quarter is correct. Vishal. Formed by the eruption of Mount Mazama some 7,000 years ago, this lake in Oregon was held sacred by the local Klamath people and is the main feature of a national park. Name this lake. Crater Lake. Crater Lake is correct. Jonathan. Mission Concepcion, built in 1755, was one of several Spanish missions established to protect borders from French encroachment and to convert Native Americans to Catholicism. These missions are near what river that shares its name with a large Texas city? The San Antonio River. That is correct. Sean. Native Americans in North Central Wyoming have long used this stone medicine wheel for ceremonies and to predict astronomical events. This sacred site is a national landmark in what mountain range that is the source of the Powder River? The Absaroka Range. I'm sorry, we were looking for Bighorn Mountains. Whew, three rounds down, four more to go before we say goodbye to the students with the four lowest scores. But with eight points up for grabs, it's still anyone's game. Now, before we dive back into the competition, let's get to know a little bit more about our 10 fine finalists. Nihar, let's begin with you. You are the, also the winner of the 2016 Scripps National Spelling Bee. That is very impressive. Can you spell my first name? <laughs> In French. M O. I'm sorry, it's M E A U. <laughs> we'll settle it later with the score. Venkat Ranjan, you are from San Ramon, California. Uh, give me sort of a fun fact about San Ramon, like maybe a point of interest. What's the best thing about it? Uh, the headquarters of the oil company Chevron. That's all we have. A little company, okay, that you plan on taking over maybe once you leave here. And it's a great place to live, right? Yeah. Okay, he's gonna work for the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Gayatri, um, it says here that you went snorkeling in Hawaii and had a family of dolphins swim right next to the boat. How could you tell they were a family? Well, that's what the tour guide said, so I guess. I'm sorry, what's that? That's what the tour guide said. I know, but they could have been friends, just hanging out. <laughs> Was it exciting? Hmm? Was it exciting? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, excellent. <laughs> Sock Cage. Um, you are from Ohio, and you won the Ohio State GOB three years in a row. Were all the questions about Ohio? No. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Well, do you know that old song? It's, an old, it's, it's round on the end and high in the middle. Oh, hi, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be 49 or older to get that. <laughs> Oops, I gave it away. <laughs> so, um, Anushka. Uh, it says here, this is really cool, that you enjoy reading fiction and plan on writing a book about an explorer. Yeah. Do you know, which explorer are you interested in? Um, I think everything from the, the Renaissance and like all the explorers coming to the New World, 
that's something that's really interested me. So I think that's an interesting story concept. Okay, oh, interesting, all right. And, and you've played the violin for how long? I think six or seven years at this point. Six or seven years. And how was it balancing studying for this and playing the violin, or did one help the other in a way? It's a really good break a lot of the time. Like if I'm studying and I'm just not remembering stuff, then it's something I'll just go and do, play for an hour, and then I'll be able to retain much more information that way. Right. I love that she blows off steam by studying the violin. <laughs> like, <laughs> how low do I feel? That's very impressive. Just gonna mess around. <laughs> Get off that violin. Come on, you're wasting time. <laughs> so. All right, Atreya, you are the youngest one here. How does that, how does that feel? I mean, you're, I mean, you're in fifth grade. It feels good to be like the youngest one. Right. Like, I have nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got time. I mean, you're gonna survive all of these people here. <laughs> You got years ahead of you, right? You, but I, but that's a good point because you can just, right, really sort of just have fun because you got years to go with yeah. this of eligibility. Yeah. And you really are just 11. This is not a ruse. Yeah, I'm 11. Okay. All right, Ashwin, this is the second time I've moderated with you up here. You were here two years ago. Yeah. What happened last year? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is very, very impressive that you're here twice. Okay, you were, now, you were um, just tr recently traveling through Costa Rica. Tell us about that. Well, it was really cool because unlike other um, countries in Latin America, Costa Rica has really taken a lot of efforts to preserve its biodiversity. So we got to travel through a lot of really pristine rainforests and natural environments that don't really exist anymore anywhere else in uh, Latin America. So that was very incredible. Well, that's wonderful. And there's, a, I think, an election coming up in Costa Rica, and he should be on the ballot. <laughs> uh, Vishal, you are from Georgia. Yeah. Georgia has a lot of great crops. Mm, yes. So I had to ask you the question. Peanuts or peaches? Peaches. Peaches. Yeah. That is correct for an extra point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful state, though. It's a beautiful state. All right, Jonathan, from North Carolina. Jonathan Song, you were on a robotics team yes. that competes in the first tech challenge. What is that? Well, it's like, oh my, it's like you make these like mini robots. It's not the full size ones, but they compete on a field and they do missions and stuff. When you eventually create your own robot, what is, what is, what is your priority? What is the one thing you want your robot to be able to do, if it, if it could do anything? <clears throat> Cook for me. <laughs> and I'm guessing Jonathan's parents feel the same way. <laughs> All right, Sean Chang from New Hampshire. Uh, your hobbies include speed cubing. And at first when I read it, I thought it was speed clubbing. And I thought, you're a little young for that. So what is speed cubing? It's just solving like Rubik's cubes as fast as you can. It's, it, it, is it specifically Rubik's cubes? What cubes? Um, there's like different size ones, like the traditional ones, like a three by three, but there's different sizes. And how fast can you do sort of an old fashioned Rubik's cube? Um, my best competition time is 9.29 seconds. 9.2 seconds? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's, wow. Um, that's how long it takes me to make the first turn. <laughs> oh, and I read some, is it, do you know what the state fruit of New Hampshire is? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, it's in the final round. No, I'm kidding. No, I read, it's a pumpkin. I thought that that was kind of cute. <laughs> and confusing, because I thought a pumpkin it was just a decoration, <laughs> or maybe a vegetable. All right, and let's give a shout out at this point to our other 44 finalists, these brilliant students. <laughs> and now back to our competition. For round four, you'll need your stylus again because everyone answers this question at the same time. This question is worth one point. The National Geographic Society is committed to exploring and protecting our planet 
and supporting bold individuals who are pushing the boundaries of knowledge. Take a look at your monitors. Daniela Kafaji is a biologist and National Geographic young explorer. As a child in Mexico, she was attracted to strange and misunderstood animals like spiders and snakes. Today, she is fortunate to work with one of the most mysterious creatures, bats. Daniela's current project is to identify and preserve bat species in archaeological zones. So at night, she spends time inside pyramids looking for these beautiful animals. And here is your question. Some female, lesser, long-nosed bats migrate to the United States to roost in a national monument that borders Mexico. These bats are the primary pollinators of a species of cactus that gave its name to the monument. What is the name of this cactus? You will have 12 seconds to write down your answer. Time's up, let's see what everyone wrote. For one point, the correct answer is organ pipe. Okay, so let's see how everyone did. Three of you had the correct answer. That was a nail biter there. We've come to the first geo challenge of the competition. We'll be testing you, not just on what you know, but how well you know it. Each of you will be presented with a different map of the contiguous United States and two choices for what that map is showing. You will have 10 seconds to tell us your answer. If you are correct, you will receive one point and the opportunity to explain why for a possible two additional points. We will give you a few moments to think about your response and when the bell rings, you'll have 20 seconds in which to complete your explanation. A panel of judges will determine if your explanation is strong enough to earn the additional two points. When it's your turn, take a look at your monitor. Ready? Mihar, take a look at your map. Does this map show vegetation zones or average wind speeds? This map is showing vegetation zones. I'm sorry. The correct answer is average wind speeds, so unfortunately you don't get any points. Bankut, take a look at your map. Does this map show irrigated land or peach production? This map shows irrigated land. That is correct for one point. For two additional points, tell us why this answer is correct. This map is showing irrigated land because um, areas that do not naturally receive a lot of water that um, support farming are shown in the map, like the Central Valley of California, and the Snake River Valley of Idaho. Uh, this map cannot be a peach production map because most peaches are grown in the south, especially in Georgia. All right, and we're gonna give the judges a moment to confer. And the judges are quite satisfied with your answer, so two additional points for you. Gayatri, take a look at your map. Does this map show percent of federal land or miles driven per capita? Uh, this map shows miles driven per capita. That is correct for one point. For two additional points, tell us why this answer is correct. Had this map shown uh, percent of federal land, places like Arizona and New Mexico with lots of land owned federally by the government uh, would have had a higher shading. This map shows uh, miles driven per capita because open places like Wyoming and Montana have We'll give the judges a moment to confer. And you just got those two additional points for your answer, for your explanation. Socket. Does your map show average minimum wage or ferry boat boardings by state? This map shows average minimum wage. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct answer is ferry boat boardings by state. So no points for you. Anushka, does your map show pesticide use or number of dairy cows? This map shows pesticide use. Pesticide use is correct. You earn one point for two additional points. Tell us why this answer is correct. This map shows pesticide use because the highest concentrations are in the Great Plains and along the Mississippi River, 
where a lot of pesticides are used in farming. If this map was showing number of dairy cows, there would be a much higher concentration in Wisconsin and Texas. We'll give the judges a moment to confer. And Anushka, they like your answer, so two additional points for you. Atreya, take a look at your map and tell us, does it show percent homeless or literacy rate? Literacy rate? I'm sorry, Atreya, the correct answer is percent homeless. Ashwin, does your map show the range of the black bear or the range of the ponderosa pine? Range of the ponderosa pine. That is correct. And uh, for one point, for two additional points, tell us why this answer is correct. This map shows range of the ponderosa pine because all of the coloring is in the western United States where the range of the ponderosa pine is in the interior west. It doesn't show black bear because black bears are also found in the eastern United States. Judges, what say you? The judges like that answer. Two additional points for Ashwin. Vishal, does your map show number of days with freezing temperatures or average annual snowfall? Um, average annual snowfall. It is average annual snowfall for one point. For two additional points, tell us why your answer is correct. Um, this map shows average annual snowfall because areas such as the Colorado Rockies and the Sierra Nevada have a high concentration in this map. And this map does not show freezing temperatures because um, there would be a higher concentration in areas such as North, like Western North Carolina and Eastern Tennessee where there would be more freezing temperatures. And the judges approve of Vishal's explanation for two additional points. Jonathan, take a look at your map. Does this map show public libraries or golf courses? Public libraries. Public libraries is correct. You earn one point. For two additional points, tell us why this answer is correct. This map shows public libraries because the higher concentration on this map is in the cities where the majority of public libraries are located. It doesn't show golf courses because golf courses can also be found in rural and suburban areas. All right, judges. The judges like that answer. Two additional points to Jonathan. Sean, does your map show Superfund hazardous waste sites or four-year colleges? Four-year colleges. I'm sorry, the correct answer was Superfund hazardous waste sites and that concludes the first geo challenge round five rounds down and two more to go before our first four eliminations there are four points up for grabs over the next two rounds you'll need your stylus again in round six we'll be hearing from a national geographic explorer take a look at your monitors Hi, I'm Courtney Borgerson. I am an anthropologist, a conservation biologist, and a National Geographic explorer. You'll often find me in Madagascar, where I study ecosystem balance and the illegal hunting of endangered lemurs. But I'm also passionate about education, and I visit classrooms in the U.S. to teach students about scientific inquiry right in their own backyards. Now here's your question. One of my first experiences with science was a school field trip to a U.S. island that is home to the world's longest-running predator-prey study. This lake island is now overpopulated with moose, and scientists want to bring the island back into ecological balance by repopulating it with wolves. Name this lake island, which is also a national park. We'll have 12 seconds to write down your answer. Time's up, let's see what everyone wrote. For one point, the correct answer is all together now, Isle Royal. <laughs> now let's take a moment to review the scores before our next round. Ashwin is in front and there is a five-way tie. Bankut, Gayatri, Anushka, Vishal, and Jonathan right behind there. Okay, after this round, the four students with the lowest scores will leave us, but there are still three points up for grabs for each student in round seven, the aptly named lightning round. Here's how it works. I'll give you each, I'll give each of you three questions in a row, and you'll have six seconds to answer each. One point is awarded for each correct response. Get ready, this one moves like 
Lightning. Lightning. Like lightning. <laughs> I'll work on my delivery, okay. Here we go. Nihar, what is the name of the largest swamp on the border of Virginia and North Carolina? The Great Dismal Swamp. That is correct. And again, Nihar. Waimea Canyon is located on which Hawaiian island? Kauai. That is correct. Name the state reptile of Mississippi. Alligator. The American alligator, that is correct. Bankut. Name the oldest existing national park east of the Mississippi River. Acadia. That is correct. Again, Bankut. Name the widest falls section at Niagara Falls. Horseshoe Falls. Horseshoe Falls is correct. Settlers in Oklahoma who started the land rush early inspired what nickname for the state? The Sooner State. That is correct. Dietry. What large city in eastern Tennessee was the state's first capital? Memphis. I'm sorry, the answer is Knoxville. Again to Gayatri. Providence, Rhode Island is located at the head of what bay? The Narragansett Bay. That is correct. What is Washington State's most valuable food crop in terms of total revenue? Apples. Apples is correct. Sockate. Name the highest mountain peak in Vermont. Mount Mansfield. That is correct. What is the largest island of American Samoa? Tutuila. Tutuila is correct. What fruit is on the standard Florida license plate? An orange. The orange is correct. Anushka, name the Rift Lake on the San Andreas Fault that is the largest lake in California. The Salton Sea. Salton Sea is correct. Name the sub-range of the Rocky Mountains that marks the western border of Montana. The Bitterroot Range. That is right. What two and a half mile walking route in Boston, Massachusetts connects 16 historic sites? The Freedom Trail. The Freedom Trail is correct. Atreya. Name the largest city on Colorado's Kashlapooter River. Fort Collins. Fort Collins is correct. Name the group of islands in northern Wisconsin that make up part of a national lakeshore. Apostle Islands. You got it. What gift from France is pictured on the state quarter of New York? Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is correct. Ashwin. Name the largest lake in Alaska. Lake Iliamna. That is correct. What river forms most of the border between Texas and Louisiana? The Sabine River. The Sabine River is correct. What is the official dance of the state of Hawaii? Hula. Hula is correct. Vishal. What bay is the sunken estuary of the Susquehanna River? Chesapeake Bay. That's correct. Name the largest city on the Cuyahoga River. Cleveland. Cleveland is correct. What is the popular name for the group of stars depicted on Alaska's state flag? The Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is right. Jonathan. Name the highest mountain peak in California. Mount Whitney. You got it. Name the capital of Guam. Could you repeat? Name the capital of Guam. Sorry. Agana. Um, that is acceptable, yes. Hagatnia or Agana, that's correct. What is the official crustacean of Louisiana? The crawfish. That is correct. Sean. What North Carolina city is located at the confluence of the Swannanoa River and the French Broad River? Charlotte. I'm sorry, the answer is Asheville. Name the largest lake in Maine, which is the source of the Kennebec River. Moosehead Lake. That is correct. In 1812, soldiers from Tennessee inspired what nickname for the state? The Volunteer State. The Volunteer State is correct. <laughs> That deserves a round of applause. I'm winded. 
Now we have reached the conclusion of part one of the competition, and we now have the tough task of saying goodbye to Atreya, Nihar, Saket, and Sean. A huge round of applause. <laughs> Valiant competitors here. One of these six students will be named the 30th champion of the National Geographic B. Remember, there's a lot on the line for these finalists, including $85,000 in scholarship money. Now, you may not know this, or maybe you do, but I love geography, and we thought it would be fun to turn the tables and have the students quiz me on their home states. So hit me with your best shot. We'll uh, start up here, Bank. Uh, name the smallest county by area in California. <laughs> you know, I bet, I bet, because there are a whole lot of people packed in there, I bet it's Los Angeles County. N no. Okay, yeah, then I bet, well, it's not Orange County, I bet it's, um, oh, is San Francisco its own county? Yes. Okay, so it's, it's the San Francisco County. Good, good job. What's that? Good job. Okay, all right, well, I sort of got that. Okay. <laughs> How small is it? Uh, I don't know, just small. <laughs> well, we're even then. <laughs> Gaia tree. What is the Indian reservation located inside an Indian reservation? An Indian reservation inside of an Indian reservation? Um, so an Indian reservation inside of, oh, it's the Turducken Nation. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you don't say I'm wrong, then I'm right. <laughs> what is it called? Do you want the answer? <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, I think we might as well resolve that. Okay. It's the Hopi. Oh, the Hopi? What are they inside of? The Navajo. Oh my God, that must be so suffocating. <laughs> well, you learn something every day you moderate the National Geographic Bee. <laughs> Anushka, I love New Jersey. And I just, before you ask me anything, I just want everyone to know that New Jersey has the most diners in America. And that is true. This one's really hard, okay? Okay. What's the highest point in New Jersey? What's the highest point in, what's the highest, the highest point in New Jersey? Um, it's not Trenton, it's, uh, is it Newark, is there, there's gotta be a mountain in New Jersey. Um, Mount Soprano. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? It's called High Point. <laughs> That is such a dad joke. <laughs> <That> is, <laughs> after the Explorer book, you gotta write a book of one-liners. That's great, I like that. I love New Jersey. New Jersey also has the most scientists and engineers per square mile. Okay, um, Ashwin. Um, uh, name the westernmost point in Oregon. The, the, the what? The westernmost point. Oh, the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, no, the westernmost point, is there, I, I once went to Pacific City, Oregon, Oh, I'm sure there's some dude in Portland that has a houseboat that's sort of like drifted out to sea so far he forgot where he well, was. And I was thinking of Cape Blanco, but you were actually correct with the Pacific Ocean, technically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I know how to game the system. I should be there. Vishal, ask me about Georgia. Um, the University of Georgia is located in which city northeast of Atlanta? Athens. Yeah. <laughs> that was just, I, this, this is the way it should go every time. <laughs> so, um, Jonathan, ask me about North, I love North Carolina. I spent two summers in Winston-Salem. Uh, what city was created in 1913 by the merging of two major tobacco towns? Oh, Winston-Salem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so. And now, back to the game. From this part of the competition on, we're going global. Questions are now worth two points. And after six more rounds, the three remaining students with the lowest scores will be eliminated. Let's move on to round eight. This round will require spoken answers only. I'm gonna give you each a question to test your knowledge and recognition of national capitals. When it's your turn, a photo related to your question will appear on your monitor. You will have 12 seconds to answer. I'm beginning with Venkat. Once a Viking settlement, this capital city is located on the east coast of an island where the river Liffey enters the sea. 
Name this city. Dublin. Dublin is correct. Gayatri. This capital city is home to the Grand Palace, which was once the official residence of the kings of Siam. Name this city. Bangkok. Bangkok is correct. Anushka. In 2011, Tahrir Square was the focal point of a revolution in a capital city. Name this city, which is located between the ruins of the ancient city of Memphis and one of the world's major river deltas. Cairo. Cairo is correct. Ashwin. Southwest of the highest point in the Andes Mountains, this capital city is located on the Mapocho River in a geological zone prone to earthquakes. Name this city. Santiago. Santiago is correct. Vishal. Founded by the Spanish, this capital city was supported by Soviet subsidies for much of the second half of the 20th century. Name this city located along the Straits of Florida. Havana. Havana is correct. Jonathan. This capital city is located northwest of the Cyclades on a peninsula that borders the Aegean Sea. Name this city, which was once a powerful city-state. Athens. Athens is correct. No time to waste. Let's get right to round nine. For this next question, you'll need your stylus once again. We have another special guest. Take a look at your monitors. Hi, I'm Grace Cowart-Young, an ocean engineer, aquanaut, and National Geographic emerging explorer. I've lived at the bottom of the ocean in the Florida Keys, sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, and I've worked with NASA to create 3D maps of asteroids. Right now, I'm working to refurbish a submarine in Kansas of all places. My great passion, though, is connecting art with science. For example, by creating 3D maps of coral reefs and dancing underwater. Now here's your question. My research has taken me to the coral reefs off the island of Utila. Utila is the westernmost island of what archipelago off the coast of Honduras? We'll have 12 seconds to write down your answer. Time's up, let's see what everyone wrote. For two points, the correct answer is Bay Islands. Let's see how you did. Three of you had the correct answer. Students, please keep your stylus out for this next video question. This year, National Geographic, the Audubon Society, BirdLife International, and Cornell Lab of Ornithology are joining with nature lovers around the world to celebrate the Year of the Bird. Birds symbolize nature's interconnectedness, and our next special guest is raising awareness of the importance of protecting birds in a changing world. Once again, take a look at your monitors. Hi, I'm Washington Washira. I'm a wildlife conservationist and a National Geographic explorer. I study African crowned eagles in urban environments. I have found them nesting near buildings, but they prefer forested parks with indigenous trees. Unfortunately, many parks are threatened by human activity and developments. So, I work to increase public awareness on ways people and birds can share urban spaces. Now, here's your question. African crowned eagles can be found in forests in a capital city near the Athi River. Name this city, which is sometimes called the green city in the sun. You will have 12 seconds to write down your answer. Time's up, let's see what everyone wrote. For another two points, the correct answer is Nairobi. Back row there all had it correct. In this next round, I'm going to give each of you a question inspired by the National Geographic Channel series called One Strange Rock, which explores the fragility and wonder of planet Earth. A photo related to your question will appear on your monitor. You will have 12 seconds to answer. Bankut. In northern Quebec, the Pinguillet Crater is an example of how meteorites have shaped our planet. Pinguillet Crater is located on what large peninsula south of the Hudson Strait? The Ungava Peninsula. The Ungava Peninsula is correct. Gayatri. 
The convergence of three tectonic plates created this depression where the ground spits acid. Located in the northern part of the Afar region on the Horn of Africa, what is the name of this feature? The Danakil Depression. The Danakil Depression is correct. Anushka. Around the world, water is temporarily harnessed by tens of thousands of large dams, such as the Zhaolangdi Dam in Henan province. The Zhaolangdi Dam is located on what river north of the Qinling Mountains? The Yellow River. The Yellow River is correct. Ashwin. Millions of years ago, supervolcanoes set off an extinction event that killed most of life on Earth. Protected in its underground burrows, a reptile called Thrinaxodon survived. Fossils of this species have been found near what river that rises in the Lesotho Highlands and flows through Uppington? The Orange River. The Orange River is correct. Vishal. Covering over 5% of Earth's landmass, lichens such as these on islands in Ontario break down rocks, generate oxygen, and absorb pollution. These islands can be found in what bay east of the Bruce Peninsula? Georgian Bay. The Georgian Bay is correct. Jonathan, on the Togian Islands in the Gulf of Tomini, most children learn to swim before they can walk. The Gulf of Tomini is one of three gulfs that define the unique shape of which of the greater Sunda Islands? Sulawesi. Sulawesi is correct. For this next question, you'll need your stylus again for a question from a special repeat guest who visited us last year from Kazakhstan. Take a look at your monitors. Hello, my name is Paul Salopek, and I'm a journalist and National Geographic fellow, and I'm 1,500 miles further along on my 21,000 mile out of Eden Walk. I'm following the pathways of our ancestors who migrated out of Africa 60,000 years ago, writing about topics such as climate change to migration to technological innovation. And you can follow along on this 10-year journey at www.outofedenwalk.org. Now here's your question. Soon my walk will take me to a city in India renowned for its architecture and urban design. It was declared a union territory in 1966 and serves as the joint capital of two neighboring states. Name this city. You will have 12 seconds to write down your answer. Time's up, let's see what everyone wrote. For two points, the correct answer is Chandigarh. See how you all did, four of you had it right. 12 rounds down and one more to go before we have to say goodbye to the three students with the lowest scores. So let's take a look at the current standings. Venkat and Anushka are tied in first place. Vishal is not far behind. Six points though are still up for grabs in our second and final lightning round. Once again, when it's your turn, you'll be asked three questions in a row and have six seconds to answer each. This time you'll receive two points for each correct response, a lot at stake. There's a lot of room to make up ground, kids, okay? Students, are you ready? Venkat, name the largest of the Balearic Islands. Majorca. Majorca is correct. The Salween River flows into the Gulf of Martaban before entering what sea? This is for you, Venkat. The Andaman Sea. That is correct. What religion is practiced by a majority of the people in Mongolia? Buddhism. Buddhism is correct. Gayatri. The far east of Bolivia is part of what large tropical wetland? The Gran Chaco. I'm sorry, the answer is the Pantanal. Name Sweden's largest island. Gotland. Gotland is correct. What is the official working language of the federal government of Ethiopia? Amharic. Amharic is correct. Anushka. What channel connects Baffin Bay with the Beaufort Sea? The Perry Channel. Perry Channel is correct. What is the name of the highest mountain peak in Algeria? Mount Tahat. You got it. What is the predominant religion of Mauritius? Hinduism. Hinduism is correct. Ashwin. 
What large saltwater lake is located just west of Tabriz, Iran? Lake Ermia. Lake Ormia is correct. Name the gulf on the southern coast of Honduras. Gulf of Fonseca. The, the Gulf of Fonseca is correct. What is the official language of Mozambique? Portuguese. Portuguese is correct. Vishal. Name the southernmost state of Mexico. Oaxaca. The answer, I'm sorry, is Chiapas. What man-made lake spans one-third of the border of Zambia and Zimbabwe? Lake Kariba. Lake Kariba is correct. What is the official currency of Denmark? The krone. The krona is correct. Jonathan, what channel south of the Irish Sea separates Wales from Ireland? The answer is St. George's Channel. Matsuyama is the largest city on what major Japanese island? Shikoku. Shikoku is correct. What is the official language of Andorra? Catalan. Catalan is correct. All right, the time has come to bid farewell to half of the students on stage. Let's take a look at the scores. We must say goodbye now to Gayatri, Ashwin, and Jonathan. A huge round of applause making it this far. Here they are, the final three. Each of these three finalists has now won at least a $10,000 scholarship. So big congratulations to each of you. You've already won big. Next, we get one step closer to crowning our champion as these three students square off in the final Geo Challenge round. To learn more about how your school can participate in the 2019 National Geographic Bee, visit our website, natgeob.org, for details and instructions on how to get started. Maybe we'll see a student from your hometown here next year. We're ready to continue with the 30th National Geographic Bee. Our three finalists are sequestered backstage, where they can neither see nor hear anything happening on stage. In this next Geo Challenge round, we'll bring them out one by one to test them, not just on what they know, but how well they can apply and communicate that knowledge. Each student will answer the same question, which poses a real world scenario, and they will be given three possible answers from which to choose. Our panel of judges will score their responses based on three criteria, accuracy, reasoning, and presentation. Each year, millions of tons of plastic waste end up in the oceans, threatening everything that depends on Earth's largest ecosystem. National Geographic has begun a multi-year effort to raise awareness and help find solutions to this crisis. Our three finalists will be asked to identify a location for an ongoing cleanup effort to recover plastics from a local river. The goal is to reduce the amount of plastic that reaches the ocean. The students must tell us which river is the best location and why. The students must focus their effort at the mouth of one of three rivers, the Niger River, the Rhine River, or the Yangtze River. They must factor in the area's population, plastic consumption, and plastic waste management. The Yangtze River is the best choice because of the high population and high plastic consumption in the Yangtze River Basin. It's also a rapidly growing area with overwhelmed waste management. The Niger River would be the second best choice. The region has less population and plastic consumption than that of the Yangtze, though its waste management is also strained. The Rhine River is the weakest choice for the cleanup effort. It has the lowest population, and while it has high per capita plastic consumption, it has the strongest existing waste management. The students must choose the answer that best fits the scenario and explain their reasoning. We will give each of them a moment to think about it, but once the bell rings, they'll have 45 seconds to respond. If he or she falls silent for more than five seconds, their time will be up. 
This question is worth a whopping nine points. So this is a game making or game breaking moment for our finalists. The students have been briefed on these rules, but obviously not the question. And remember, this is not just about right or wrong. This is also about reasoning and the quality of presentation. We begin with the student currently in third place. Vishal, please come on out on stage to be the first to answer this geo challenge. I ask you to take right front and center. That's perfect right there. Vishal, here's the question. Each year, millions of tons of plastic debris ends up in the oceans, much of it from rivers. Your goal is to help reduce the amount of plastic that reaches the oceans by organizing a cleanup effort to remove plastic from a major river. You can focus your cleanup effort near the mouth of one of three rivers, the Niger River, the Rhine River, or the Yangtze River. Based on the criteria of population, plastic consumption, and plastic waste management, on which river would your cleanup effort have the greatest impact? You will have 15 seconds to think about your answer. When the bell rings, please begin. I would focus my cleanup effort on the Yangtze River because first of all, the Yangtze River has a really great population with cities such as Shanghai and Nanjing. Second of all, there's a lot of plastic consumption with China being having one of the most plastic consuming countries in the world. And China doesn't have the best plastic waste management. So um, a cleanup would really help um, clean up the plastic on the Yangtze River. The Niger River, on the other hand, does not have as much plastic consumption as the Yangtze does. And the Rhine River, is really good with plastic waste management and uh, pla it doesn't consume as much plastic as the Yangtze River. For these reasons, I would choose the Yangtze River for my cleanup effort. Thank you. A round of applause for Vishal. Nicely done. So come back here if you would, and I'm going to ask you to stand like right in here, sort of. Okay. All right. Now, let's bring out Anushka. Okay. Anushka, come on out. I'm going to ask you to stand nice front and center there. Anushka, here's the question. Each year, millions of tons of plastic debris ends up in the oceans, much of it from rivers. Your goal is to help reduce the amount of plastic that reaches the oceans by organizing a cleanup effort to remove plastic from a major river. You can focus your cleanup effort near the mouth of one of three rivers, the Niger River, the Rhine River, or the Yangtze River. Based on the criteria of population, plastic consumption, and plastic waste management, on which river would your cleanup effort have the greatest impact? You will have 15 seconds to think about your answer. When the bell rings, please begin. I would choose the Yangtze River to focus a cleanup effort on. The, Yangtze River flow, the mouth of the Yangtze River is at Shanghai, which is a major city in China. Between, between the many people in this city, there is a lot of plastic waste that occurs. And China is often considered one of the most populated, places, populated and polluted places in the world. On the other hand, the Rhine River mouth is in the Netherlands, where there is a stable cleanup system already in place and a much smaller population. Along the Niger River, there is also less plastic waste being used. For these reasons, I would choose the Yangtze River to focus a cleanup effort on. Thank you. Right. Anushka, if I can ask you to come back here, please, and stand to the left of Anka. Perfect. Whew. All right. And now, let's bring out Vankut. All right, Vankut, if you want to stand right front and center there. Here's the question. Each year, millions of tons of plastic debris ends up in the oceans, much of it from rivers. 
Your goal is to help reduce the amount of plastic that reaches the oceans by organizing a cleanup effort to remove plastic from a major river. You can focus your cleanup effort near the mouth of one of three rivers, the Niger River, the Rhine River, or the Yangtze River. Based on the criteria of population, plastic consumption, and plastic waste management, on which river would your cleanup effort have the greatest impact? You will have 15 seconds to think about your answer. When the bell rings, please begin. I believe that the Yangtze River is the best river to um, focus on a plastic cleanup effort on. Uh, this is because tens of millions of people live on the Yangtze River Bay, and they produce a lot of plastic um, as the as uh, thanks to river in China has a huge manufacturing industry that produced a lot of plastic waste. Uh, also, uh, the China does not have a very good plastic waste management program, unlike uh, the Rhine River in Europe. And um, the Rhine River is not a good choice because even though it produces a lot of plastic, as I said before, it, does not, it has good plastic waste management. The Niger River is not a good choice because not too many people live along its banks and it has very low plastic consumption. Uh, that is why. All right, very good. I'm going to ask the two of you to come with me, please. And if you would, Venkat, stand to the left, and Vishal all the way on the right, and Anushka between, in the order in which you came out. Great job by all of our finalists. Whoa. Now, our judges will take a few moments to confer. The judges have tabulated the scores for this Geo Challenge and are ready to share the results. Judges, we'll start with Vishal. Hi, Vishal. You responded with the Yangtze River, which was the best choice. You gave great supporting facts for all the criteria we were looking for, including mentioning Shanghai and Nanjing. Your excellent presentation was also very well organized and had an excellent progression as well. We gave you eight points. Okay, and that gives Vishal a total now of 30 points. And we move on to Anushka now. Anushka, you also mentioned the Yangtze River, which was what we were looking for. You had good facts to support all of the criteria and contrasted the weaker choices against the best answer. Your presentation was very, very clear, but it did feel a little rushed. We gave you seven points. Okay, and that gives Anushka a total of 33 points. And finally, Venkat. Venkat, you also mentioned the Yangtze River. You had excellent details and a more complete explanation to support your choice, including mentioning the industrial base of the Yangtze Basin. Your presentation was effective, but overall could have been smoother. We gave you eight points. And that gives you, Van Cut, a total of 34. Tremendous job by all. That was a real nail biter. And after tabulating the scores, we must say goodbye to Vishal. But don't forget, you're still leaving here a winner. There's a $10,000 scholarship with your name on it. A big congratulations to you for making it this far. <clears throat> and then there were two, Anushka Budakot from New Jersey and Bankat Ranjan from California. We're going to get set up for the final round, and when we return, one of these gifted students will become the 2018 National Geographic B Champion. There is a lot on the line for these students. The champion will receive a $50,000 scholarship, plus a lifetime membership to the National Geographic Society. 
and a Lindblad expedition to the Galapagos Islands aboard the National Geographic Endeavor 2. Now, back to Mo Rocca. Welcome to the championship round of the 30th National Geographic B. Out of 2.6 million students, 54 of the country's brightest young geographers made it here to Washington, D.C. The top 10 earned their place to compete today. And now we're down to two. 13-year-old Venkat Ranjan from California and 13-year-old Anushka Budakot from New Jersey. Congratulations to you both on making it this far. <clears throat> So, Vankut, what would it mean to you to win this thing? Uh, uh, it would be good. <laughs> be good. You're sort of underplaying it right now, right? Maybe. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Anushka, how long have you prepared for this moment? I've been participating in the National Geographic Bee since I was in fourth grade. Since you were fourth grade, about eight, yeah. nine or ten years, or eight or nine years old, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, excellent, okay. Well, you've come a long way, both of you, and now it's time to get down to business. Here's how it's going to work. You each begin this final round with a clean slate. The championship round is single elimination. You will both be asked the same question at the same time. The contestant who correctly answers a question that the other contestant misses will be named our national champion. So watch closely because every question could be the winning question. You're gonna need your stylus for this final round. I will read each question twice, so listen carefully before answering. You'll then have 12 seconds to write your responses. For the final time, students, are you ready? Yes. They're ready. Here is your question. Name the small Southeast Asian country that has a northern coastline on the Waitar and Ombai Straits. I repeat, name the small Southeast Asian country that has a northern coastline on the Waitar and Ombai Straits. Bangkok, what do you have? East Timor. Anushka? Timor-Leste. The correct answer is Timor-Leste, also East Timor, so you are both correct. <laughs> and we like variety. Okay, on to the next question. Lebanon has a population most similar to which South American country? I repeat, Lebanon has a population most similar to which South American country? Bangkok, what do you have? Paraguay. Anushka. Guyana. What do you have? Two different answers. I can tell you now that one is correct. So we're about to learn who is the 2018 National Geographic B champion. The correct answer is Paraguay. So Vankot Ranjan is the 2018 National Geographic B. Well done. A dramatic end to a terrific competition. Here's how our 10 finalists officially finished. And remember, each of these students outlasted millions of others around the country to make it to Washington, D.C. and end up on this stage. And now, to award the medals to our top three finishers, please welcome Mike Ulica, Interim President and CEO of the National Geographic Society. Thank you, Mike. 
Finishing in third place and winner of a $10,000 scholarship, Vishal Saretti from Georgia. Congratulations, Vishal. Thank you. Wonderful, Vishal. Wonderful. Okay. Our runner up and winner of a $25,000 scholarship, Anushka Bodukot from New Jersey. And the winner of a $50,000 scholarship, a lifetime membership to the National Geographic Society, and a trip for two on a Lindblad expedition to Galapagos Islands aboard the National Geographic Endeavor to the 2018 National Geographic Champion, Venkat Ranjan from California. Thank you, Mike. And I'm going to step over here and just... And, Vankut, I've got to ask you, what was going through your mind on that last question about the population of Lebanon being similar, most, most similar to which South American country? Uh, I don't know this, so I'm going to have to guess something. <laughs> so you kind of winged it. <laughs> kind of. Right. And we're lucky that in the midst of those two minutes, Paraguay didn't have a huge baby boom or something like that. <laughs> would have thrown the whole thing off. Now, please join me in congratulating Bangkok, our other nine finalists, and all 54 of the students who made it here to Washington, D.C. I'm Mo Rocca. Thanks for watching. And remember that science, exploration, education, and storytelling can change the world. And I want the parents of our three finalists to come on up on stage. Let's get the parents. Come on up. Congratulations. Congratulations. Ah! Ah! Love it, love it, love it. Congratulations, all of you.